What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with another fraction lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about what are equivalent fractions. We hear about them all the time, but what in the world does that really mean? So let's build it up with our objective today. Our objective today. Today, I will be able to understand what it means when fractions are equivalent. So what is equivalent, right? Being equivalent means that two things have the same value or are equal. So when I think about equivalence, I think about this scale right here. Some people call it a balance, okay? And we know that whatever's on this left side has to be equivalent or equal to the value of whatever is on this right side, right? Otherwise, the balance tips and isn't balanced anymore. But let's go back to the balance that is equal to each other, right? And we've been doing a lot of things with equivalence for a long time. For instance, we know that if you put 2 plus 2 over here and you had a 4 on this side, these would be balanced, right? They would be equivalent. 2 plus 2 is equivalent or equal to 4. But if I erase that 4 and put a 5 over on this side, it would become unbalanced very quickly because 5 is more than 2 plus 2, right? They aren't balanced, so my scale would tip. So I cannot say that 2 plus 2 equals 5 because it's not true, right? They are not equivalent. So you guys already knew that with whole numbers, but you might not have thought about equivalence in fractions very much, but it's the exact same thing. Let's clear the board and get our balanced scale back. So what does it mean for fractions to be equivalent, right? It's really the same thing that we just looked at with whole numbers. Let's take a look at our balance right here to see what I mean. So here is one whole candy bar, okay? And I got a candy bar and Kenny got a candy bar, okay? They're the same exact size candy bar, same chocolate, same everything. Now I want to split my candy bar in half. And so I cut it right in the middle, and you can see right there I labeled my unit fractions that build my whole, right? I have one half here and one half here. Now Kenny wanted to split his candy bar into sixths. And so Kenny did that, and you can see that his unit fraction obviously would be one sixth because one sixth is what one of these parts is equal to. So he has one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth. And so he equally split his into sixth. Now, I wasn't very hungry, and so I didn't want to eat the whole candy bar at one time. The question is, how many pieces of Kenny's candy bar would he have to eat to have eaten the same value or the same amount of chocolate that I've eaten? Remember, he cut his into sixth, so his pieces are a lot smaller than my pieces. So now that they're next to each other, right, hopefully it's a little bit easier to see, how many pieces of Kenny's candy bar would he have to eat to be equal or to eat the same amount of chocolate that I had? Well, obviously it's not one because his one piece is a lot smaller than my one piece, right? He split his into six pieces, so that makes a lot of sense. He split his into smaller pieces. So let's give him another piece. So if we gave him two six, you can still see that that's not the same value as one half. If he eats two six and I eat one half of my chocolate bar, we don't have the same amount of chocolate in our stomach. So let's give him one more. Looks like he's only one piece away from being equal to me. There you go. And you can very clearly see then if he ate three of his pieces, he ate the same amount that I ate. In other words, if we put both of these fractional pieces onto the scale, the scale would be balanced. They are equal to each other. So mathematically what we would write is one half of my chocolate bar was equivalent to three sixths of his chocolate bar. Because remember the numerator tells us how many unit fractions we need to build this fraction. So both of these fractions represent the same amount of the whole. I just needed more 1 6 because when I split it into 6, my pieces were smaller, right? My unit fraction of 1 6 is smaller than my unit fraction of 1 half, so I needed more of them. I really love this example because it leads us into our key thought. 
which is to be called equivalent, fractions don't need to be written with the same numbers. They have to represent the same value. So going back to look at this, one half doesn't look the same as three six, right? The numbers are different. Matter of fact, they mean different things. But one half represents this much of my chocolate bar, and three six represented the exact same amount of candy bar, right? That's what equivalent fractions are. Fractions that represent the same amount of your whole. So because math can't always be chocolate bars and pizza, right? It can be food all the time, although we love food out here in Structa Beats. Let's take a look at what this might look like mathematically. A lot of times we use fraction strips to help us understand fractions. So here's one whole, okay? And here's one fourth of that whole. If I broke this whole into fourths, this is what one of those parts would look like. This is a unit fraction. Now let's use this unit fraction to build three fourths. All right, so here's my fraction three fourths, right? My numerator of three told me I needed three unit fractions to build this. Now what happens if I took this one whole again and split it into eighths or eight equal parts? One of those pieces would look like this, right? This is one eighth. This is my unit fraction for if I split my whole into eight equal pieces, each piece would be worth this size. Now the question I want to answer is, can I build a fraction with a denominator of eight, right? So using my one eighth, that is equivalent to three fourths. Is that even possible? So instead of using the scale, I'm using my equal sign, right? Because that's what we use to represent the scale in math. So let's start by using my one eighth, right? My unit fraction to build a fraction so I can represent the same amount with eight that I did with three fourths. And I'm gonna space them out just a little bit um, so you can kind of very clearly see how many eighths I needed, but really they're right next to each other. So here's two eighths, right? And I can see that two eighths would be equivalent or the same size as one fourth. So using that knowledge, I can see that, hey, I can build a piece that is the same size as three fourths using eights because I just need two for each of my one fourth. So here I have four eights and I can see that four eights are equivalent to two fourths. So I need two more eights. And then you can see right here that I could build a fraction using my one eighths that it was equivalent to three fourths. So if I have six eights, right? If I use six unit fractions that have a value of one eighth, that is equal to or the same size as three fourths or three unit fractions of one fourth. These are equivalent fractions. They would be balanced on our scale. All right, so we're gonna do a U try. Now I've given you the, the, all the fraction strips kind of together, so that way, um, because you might not have them with you and that's okay, right? So you can use this to kind of estimate if you need to, because I know you're looking at a screen. But what, what I wanna figure out first of all is, is it possible to build a fraction that is equivalent to two thirds using sixth? So come down here and here's your unit fraction for six. How many six would I need, if it's even possible, to make something that is equivalent to two of my thirds? Go ahead and pause the video right now and see if you can use the fraction strips right here to figure that out. Write it down on your paper and then push play to check your work. So hopefully you just did. And you can see right here that if I had two thirds, I would need two of these unit fractions put together and that if I have four sixths, that these are equivalent. These are the same size. So two thirds is equivalent to four sixths. So let's do one more together. What I wanna know is, can you build a fraction that is equivalent to seven eighths, right? So seven of my one eighths, right? Using your unit fraction one third. So can you take your one third and make it equivalent to seven eighths? Go ahead and pause the video, try it out, and then push play to check your work. So hopefully you just paused it and you tried it. And so here I have seven eighths, that would be seven of my unit fraction one eighths put together. And you can see right here, it'd be about this size. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and outline that in red so it's a little bit easier to see. There we go, so that would be seven eighths. And here's my one third. And if you look at it, I cannot build a fraction using thirds that is equivalent to seven eighths because two thirds would be right here. That would not be the same size. They wouldn't be equal on our balance. And if I kept going, 
my next one third would make me equivalent to one whole, and that is not equal. So I cannot make a fraction using thirds that is equivalent to seven eighths. So I wanna bring us back to our key thought. To be equivalent, fractions do not need to be written with the same numbers, right? They have to represent the same value. That's what equivalent fractions are. Fractions that can be written differently that represent the same amount of the whole. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online. Please check out InstructedBeats.com for all the Instructed Beats merchandise you might want to buy or video lessons or timers. We would love for you to subscribe. Hit the like button. Comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instructed Beats out.